is the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. It was passed in 1990 as a way to, for tribes to access information about human remains, their ancestors, about the burial objects that were buried with their ancestors, as well as ceremonial items and cultural patrimony that had been removed from tribal lands without their permission. The federal NAGPRA law um, in 1998 that was aimed at actually um, repatriating and returning um, vast collections that were held in federal repositories, museums, um, institutions that received federal funding. With our ancestors being ex extracted and taken to institutions and put on shelves and measured and analyzed, in a nutshell, it's painful, chaotic, and disrespectful. There's pieces of us all over the world now because some of the stuff has just gone to different places. And so we're just trying to make ourselves whole again uh, and repatriation. Uh, gives us that opportunity to do. NAGPRA is actually um, mandated by federal statute. Um, it is a human rights um, piece of legislation and there is mandatory reporting and um, processes within any federally funded museum or institution. It's not optional and it's also not a special interest kind of project. It really is mandated by federal law to correct for hundreds of years of human rights abuses against Native people. NAGPRA initially um, limited repatriation to federally recognized tribes. We are a non-federally recognized tribe. And that means that we're unidentifiable, which is unacceptable. What's your status? Uh, Non-federal, oh, we don't have to talk to you. Um, so it's just, uh, we managed to come around and, and Instead of kicking and trying to pan down the door, we looked at it as um, a way to lobby and address it and uh, find the people who can make decisions and uh, get to that table. Discuss the importance um, of our tribe's sovereignty, even though we don't have federal, federal recognition, but there's, we still exist as a tribe. So the regulations are revised to allow for the possibility of return of at least the ancestors to non-federally recognized tribes, uh, so long as you go through a whole process and there are no federally recognized tribes that have conflicting interests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Fortunately, uh, we have established good relationships with Pachanga Band of Los Enyo Indians. They were able to help facilitate the repatriation of uh, close to 100 individuals just recently. The alteration of the regulations in 2010 really uh, alleviated to some considerable extent the problems that were initially established under NAGPRA. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that the NAGPRA process can be very costly and time-consuming and somewhat confusing. It's great language legally, but how is that practically carried out? And what are the policies that flow from that to enable that definition that legal directive or statutory directive to actually be carried out and that's where the rubber hits the road. It's like you must um, have people that are sensitive to that know what that means for from a tribal perspective. Non-federal tribes uh, don't have the finances to support uh, the study, the professionals, the experts that can do all that process. You know, filing the documents and paperwork unless we find someone who can uh, you know, pro bono do the work or lean on to universities to grab students that can uh, do some of that work for us or professors who can assign some students for us uh, to do some of that work. I mean, other than that, we won't be able to financially afford that. They're not just artifacts and I think that's one of the things that's been so striking to me is how many sets of remains are actually still being held but they're not even being used for research purposes. They're just being maintained on principle or retained on principle, in some sense kind of in opposition to the idea of repatriation to Native communities with this whole myth that Native people don't care about science or don't believe in science, which is absolutely not the case. My original instinct of just give it all back now. 
uh, was very naive and I, I think people need to understand that it's much more difficult. It's, it's, it, it's na individual nation to nation based what people want. So while we have the blanket NADPRA law, I think you have to work with tribal communities to see how they want those homes. Native people are not a homogenous whole. You represent an enormous swath of the world just like any other group does. Um, and people don't have exactly the same idea about repatriation in every setting. They're all families and, and each family has their own set of rules and laws and, and habits very much. The way they function and work is maybe different and they may be as close neighbors as one down the street versus one up the street. But they have their own mind, their own opinions and their own set of habits that they work through. When you go back, you know, decades or hundreds of years, there are some tribes that aren't comfortable with bringing people back into their community because they don't know who they were. And there are also religious uh, shifts in religion that happen over time that also cause different views. So it's a much more nuanced and complex process than people think it is. Indigenous cultures, like all cultures, are not static. The fact that there has been uh, some variation in practices, in ceremonies, in beliefs over time, is not a demonstration of cultural discontinuity. And people don't understand that. They think if you haven't maintained exactly the same practices from 4,000 years ago to today, that you can't claim to be culturally affiliated. That's just wrong. There's been enormous cultural and religious evolution over the hundreds of years. So it's really about self-determination, that it's about empowering the tribe to, to be able to be in conversation with the institutions that are holding the remains of their ancestors and for them to be a meaningful participant in deciding what happens. That's really what we should be trying to facilitate through the law. It's taken a long time. I mean, even from that time in the 90s of setting up these groups and these committees uh, on repatriation, having the discussions about what is culturally affiliated and how do we carry out all these dynamics that are in the law, in the statute. You know, that's a long time. It's been 20 years and now we're finally seeing repatriations come about on a wide-scale basis. So to the academics and the researchers, um, I want to tell them that our relatives aren't objects. And um, I want them to know that there are people and that we will continue to do whatever we can to bring them home.